The story begins on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, where the Pandavas and Kauravas prepare for a war that will decide the fate of the kingdom of Hastinapura. Both sides are ready for battle, with mighty armies facing off. In the midst of this, Arjuna, the great warrior of the Pandavas, is struck with deep sorrow as he surveys the battlefield. He sees his relatives, friends, and revered teachers on both sides prepared to fight and die. A deep conflict arises in his heart. How can he kill those he loves, even in the name of righteousness? Arjuna turns to his charioteer Krishna and expresses his turmoil. Krishna, how can I engage in this war? What good is a kingdom if it is won by the death of my loved ones? How can I face the consequences of this destruction? I would rather renounce my role as a warrior than take part in such devastation. His mind is heavy with doubt, and his hands shake as he puts down his bow, refusing to fight. Arjuna, the mighty warrior, is now paralyzed by indecision. His heart is torn between his duty as a warrior and his love for those on the battlefield. He cannot bear the thought of killing his teachers, cousins, and friends. He questions the purpose of war, life, and duty itself. Krishna, even if we win, what joy is there in a kingdom won through the blood of our family? It would be better to live a life of poverty than to rule over the ruins of my loved ones. Arjuna's struggle is not just about the war before him, but about his understanding of dharma and the nature of life. He seeks an escape, but deeper questions about life and death, action and inaction, haunt him. He turns to Krishna for guidance, hoping for clarity in his moment of despair. Krishna listens patiently to Arjuna's grief and begins to reveal profound truths to him. Arjuna, you grieve for those who should not be grieved for. The wise do not mourn for the living or the dead. The soul is eternal. It is never born and it never dies. Just as the body discards old clothes and puts on new ones, the soul moves from one body to another. Those whom you fear to kill are not their bodies, but their immortal souls. Krishna's words are meant to soothe Arjuna's fear of death. The soul is beyond the reach of destruction, and death is merely a transition. However, Krishna emphasizes that duty must still be performed. Your duty as a warrior is to fight for righteousness. To abandon your duty is to invite dishonor. Fight, Arjuna, but do so without attachment to the outcome. It is the attachment to success or failure that binds us, not the actions themselves. Perform your duty selflessly. Krishna introduces the concept of karma yoga or selfless action. By acting without attachment to the results, Arjuna can transcend the limitations of his mind and fulfill his destiny. Arjuna is still troubled by the idea of fighting a violent war, even if it is his duty. Krishna, how can I fight without being consumed by the consequences? How do I avoid the sin of violence? Krishna explains further, Act without attachment, Arjuna. Fight, but do not fight for victory. Perform your duty for the sake of duty itself and offer the results to the divine. This is the path of karma yoga. The wise do not seek rewards from their actions, nor do they fear failure. They act with a pure heart and remain in peace no matter the outcome. Krishna teaches that it is the intention behind action that matters. By detaching oneself from the fruits of action, one can remain free from the binding effects of karma. Arjuna must fight, but he must do so without hatred, ego, or desire for success. His duty is to act, but the outcome is in the hands of the divine. Despite Krishna's teachings, Arjuna remains uncertain. He asks Krishna to reveal his true, divine form so that he may fully understand the magnitude of his words. Krishna grants Arjuna divine sight and in a moment Arjuna beholds Krishna's universal form. He sees the entire universe within Krishna. The sun, the stars, the past, present and future all existing in a single, overwhelming vision. He witnesses the birth and death of all beings the cycles of creation and destruction. Terrified and in awe, Arjuna falls to his knees. He realizes that Krishna is not just his charioteer, but the very embodiment of the divine. He begs Krishna to return to his familiar, 
human form. Krishna reassures him and returns to his gentle, human form. Do not fear, Arjuna. All that happens is part of the divine plan. The battle, the deaths you fear, are all predestined. You are merely an instrument in this greater design. With his doubts dispelled, Arjuna stands up, his heart clear and mind calm. He now understands that his role in the battle is part of a divine plan and that he must act without attachment to the outcome. He picks up his bow and prepares to fight, not with anger or fear, but with clarity of purpose. Krishna, you have shown me the way. I will fight, not for victory, but because it is my duty. I will act with a pure heart, and whatever the outcome, I know it is in accordance with the divine will. As the conch shells signal the start of battle, Arjuna rides into war, with Krishna by his side, his soul at peace, and his mind focused on fulfilling his dharma. Subscribe the channel for more.